temporary solution to make a bridge. I have this nice piece of 4mm PVC. I can lay the track on it, couple up the fish plates and run. So that's good. But I've been making some points as well. And uh, before I fasten these down permanently in place, I need to know exactly where my permanent bridge will be. So I have to make the permanent bridge. I have some laminate flooring. These are off cuts that were left after I put down the workshop floor. And I chucked them out here and just left them. Now they've been here a few months and they haven't swelled or bent an awful lot or anything with the rain and that. So I figure they might be good material to try making the bridge out of. So I've found my material and I have an idea in my mind what I want this bridge to look like. The laminate that I have is quite thick, it's about nine millimetres or a centimetre thick. So I, I think I have in mind a shallow arch underneath and then above a parapet each side, two thicknesses of laminate, maybe a scale three or four foot high and extending scale three or four feet past the end of the gap. So the roadbed that the bit of laminate that will make the surface will drop into the gap, the parapets will support it. So this will give a, a positive location each time and as a datum to start building from I've clamped some pieces of two by one here underneath the boards and I just put a spirit level across on a bit of scrap wood and that looks pretty level. So the next thing to do is a bit of carpentry. So after a couple of hours with the fret saw and the band saw I'm now going to kit bridge. I'll bring you in a little bit closer to show you the parts of it. So here's the kit of parts. There are two end plates that are going to go under the bridge. Remember when it's finished the two by ones here which are supporting everything won't be here. Now the sides of the bridge we've cut with a slight arch. So I pop those in, they go outside of the end plates and you'll notice I've left a couple of mil for movement. The bridge deck that sits in there and that allows for just a couple of millimetres overhang there just to give a, a line to it. Now the parapets are made up of two lengths and they are, slide this this way a little bit, so they're two thicknesses, they're five centimetre over length and they will go in place like that and something similar on this side. So this is the kit now of parts. You can see here I've already done the, the first parapet and the way I'm joining them is with uh, some wood adhesive, it's a, a PVA type stuff as far as I know, and I'm using some small brass screws, they're, they're half inch, 12.7 mil. So I've been sitting here for the last few minutes, I have my pictures of a stone bridge and I have one of the bridge sides. Now I marked on some lines about 15 mil, that's just 11, 11 inches really uh, apart as a rough guide. And then I drew in the stones of the arch and then I filled in some of the big stones and then I kind of copied the picture and, and filled in the other stuff. Uh, trying to get the, the, the feel of the thing. I'm, I'm sure a real stonemason would tell me oh we don't do it like that and, and you're, you're quite right. A uh, real stonemason isn't using a piece of MDF and a motor tool to make his wall. But uh, I'm hoping that when it's painted and finished it, it'll catch the, the, the feel of the thing at least. So the next step is to go ahead and uh, attack it with the motor tool.
doesn't look too bad, does it? After I finish cutting in the water lines for the stonework with the motor tool and a little disc cutter, so then I assembled everything of the kit of parts that I had. Kind of looks the part. It's good and solid and heavy, so it stays in place. Next on the agenda is painting, and then after that, or alongside that, I'll make up some track to go in here with some locating mechanism at the ends, so that the bridge always goes back exactly in the The right painting part. regime is going to be the acrylic grey primer. It's had two coats all over now. I did top sides, and then I flipped it over. It'll now about 25 minutes between coats, so I did two coats on the top, flipped it over, I've given the underside uh, first coat, the second one to go on there. So anyway, as I say, that, that's now waiting, it's, it needs another 10 minutes or so to dry, and then it'll get the second coat of primer, and after that it's going to be inside the shed, and, and then I'll brush paint it with the, it's some uh, household emulsion, a little testers that I got from the home base. So I'll, I'll brush paint over it with a, a light grey and then start picking out and blending the colours a bit and, and see what we can come out to and then probably end up by rubbing some just watered down black into the um, joints between the stones and that. I finished with the priming and I filled one or two screw holes that we missed earlier. So now I'm into the top coat painting. Now I'm going to start with the underneath, the bit that nobody sees, because that wants to get a couple of coats in there just to make sure it's good and weatherproof. Need a paintbrush. Well, there's one there that'll do the job. Now then, nearly there. Now you are of course in these one pound tins of paint limited by the colours people want to pay their house, paint their houses in. Which is a bit of a nuisance, you can't get a sort of signal red very easily. So I've given the bridge an overall coat of a, quite a light grey. It's turtle dove grey. Now I've got a base coat of this very light grey on. I want to, to add something to bring out the, the mortar joints between the stones and start to give it a bit of uh, depth, if you like. Now I've got a, a washing up sponge here and I've taken some of the paint I used, the dark charcoal coloured paint. I've watered it down. It, what I'm, trying to do is just wipe on fairly light coat. The plot is supposed to be that the paint gathers in the water joints. I'm using this rather than paper towel or something to wipe over. I want to leave plenty in those joints. I'm going to try to put a little bit onto the lower half of these stones, particularly the big ones. And now I have some white paint over here. I actually wipe almost all the paint off the brush. Now remembering this is upside down, I'm trying to get just a little bit of white paint along the top edge of these stones. Anyway, I'm going to keep repeating that. Now the end result, if I turn this round and bring it into shot, is more like that. So that's the outside. But as you can see, the when you get lumps of stone in a something like bridge work like this, the stone has been dressed to a certain extent. The centre of each stone, the edges tend to be 
squared up a little bit more and the centre of the stone tends to be slightly wider quite often. But in, in any case it, it adds a sort of 3D feel to the thing. And when you add it to the other, we put the wash on first of all to get into the mortar lines. Then we, we use the dry brushing here to almost like smoke or whatever from, or, or you know, from traffic underneath or whatever. But the, you know, highlighted the, the, the stones of the arch there. We add in a bit of greeny stuff there, which is where water's run down. But then the, the last thing we did was this dry brushing on the stones, so using the two colours here. And I, I think it brings them out quite well. It, it makes them sort of pop out from the flat a little bit. After I'd finished with the dry brushing, adding highlights and shadows to each of the big stones on the bridge, which I think helped the 3D effect quite a lot. Then this morning I gave the bridge two coats of a clear lacquer that's designed for interior or exterior use. It's an extra protection on top of the emulsion paint. I'm not sure if it's required, but I had it there, so I used it. So the bridge is outside of the layout now. So the next thing is the track work to run through it. <laughs> <laughs> 